Welcome, Grade 11. We're going to look at some circle geometry in this presentation. It comes from the November paper 2016. If we look at the first question, it says, complete the following statement. So before I'm going to look at this, if they ask you to complete a statement or they ask you to work out a proof, then 99% of the time, the actual question that you get will be based on the proof. Or like in this case, whatever they say we must complete, which theorem it is, your actual question is going to be based on that. The angle subtended by an arc at the center of a circle is what? is twice the size of the angle at the circumference. Okay, you know what that one means. So normally we work with this one that looks like that. Okay, so if you've got one there, the angle here at the center of the circle will always be twice the size of the angle at the circumference that's inside a circle. So let's keep that in mind. Then it says here, O is the center of the circle. So there's O, center of the circle. And the first question says, calculate the size of PRS. So PR. S. Can you see if this is the center of the circle? Many people slightly get confused where they then think that this would be angles in the same circle segment. But it's not because this is center of the circle. It's not lying on the circumference. So therefore, this one will be 30 degrees. So this one is the same as that one, except that it's just not on the top it's on the side, you see. So PR is, we're just going to say, PR is equal to 30 degrees, angle center is equal to two times the angle at the circumference. So for example, if there's two angles there, there will be only one. Next question, they say figure out the size of NST. So let's see, where's NST? So we must figure out this angle. So always look at what is given. They gave us PS, this chord, any line that's not a diameter is a chord. So the moment that I see two chords, this PS is equal to TN. That's when I keep this in mind, this theorem of yours. Let's say I have a chord. All three of these lines are chords. So let's say they tell me that line and this line is equal. Then it means, because it's two equal chords, it means the angle opposite this equal chord will be equal to the angle opposite that chord. So in this case, if you just see this chord, it means 60 degrees. I don't know, where am I now? I want to work in that one. I want to work with this one. There's your triangle. You can't work with 60 because it's not lying on the circumference, you see. You can only work with this triangle. So here's your chord, and the opposite angle will be the 30 degrees. And because this is an equal chord, it means this little TSN will also be equal to 30 degrees because it's equal chords sub tens equal angles, meaning equal chords, subtends means it lies underneath. 
So NST will be equal, sorry, NST will be equal to 30 degrees, equal chords, subtends lies underneath, subtends equal angles. Let's say you had angles that were equal. Oops, let's draw it slightly different. As long as all three angles lie on the circumference. Let's say this is 10 degrees and let's say that one is 10 degrees. Then the chord opposite this angle, that one, will be equal to the chord opposite that angle. Then you can still write the same and just put in front converse of equal chords, subtend equal angles, or you can say equal angles. It's the opposite of this one now. Equal angles, subtends equal chords. Right, so in our so in this one that we did, the chords was given. So the given information comes first. Yeah, we said for the angles that were equal. So this was given. So you write that first. Let's look at the next question. In this example, what does it say? It says that D, E, F, G, and H are points on the circumference. So whenever it's points on the circumference, I know it's going to be a quadrilateral. So then we can apply all the theorems of a circle. So there's D, E, F, G, and H. Doesn't matter that there's no line there. Furthermore, we have this one, this angle, and we sit here with parallel lines right parallel so we think of fun so keep everything in mind determine the size of d e g and they say in terms of in terms of x so let's see where's d e g so we must figure out this one so i can see that this one will be equal to 180 minus this one, that's one option. And you see, because it's angles opposite a cyclic quad would be equal to 180 degrees. It will supple be supplementary. So you can either say DEG, that one, plus angle H, plus 2X plus 10, you can say it's equal to 180 degrees, opposite angles of a cyclic quad. That's one option. So then it means DEG will be equal to 180 minus 10, which is 170 minus 2X. That's one option. Or, you can make use of your parallel lines here, you see? So this angle will be equal to that one, alternate angles. So this one, there's your parallel line. So you see it forms alternate angles like that. There's your other parallel line. So we can also say the EG is equal to EGF, EGF, and that's equal to X plus 20. Alternate angles, because ED is parallel to FG. Right. Then for the next one, okay, so let's just fill in what we have now. So when you do it, you just quickly draw the circle and you fill in everything. Calculate the size of DHG. 
G, D, H, G. So we must now actually solve this one. We must figure out what is the size. So you can either now set this one, no, that's not going to help you if you set that one equal to that one, that's not going to help us. So what else can we do? You can work here, you can set this one plus that one will be equal to 100 and um, 80 degrees, right? So that's one option. So I'm going to say 2x plus 10 plus my x plus 20 is equal to 180 degrees opposite angles of a cyclic quad. Right, and then we just work it out. That's going to be 3x. 30, so minus it, so it's 150. The x is equal to 50 degrees. They ask us for d, h, g, d, h, g. Therefore, d, h, g will be equal to 2 times 50 degrees, because it's 2x. And that is equal to 100 and 10 degrees, right? See if there's maybe another way of, I'll give you two minutes, try and see if there isn't another, another way of solving it. Okay, so remember now, whenever you work something out, always write it in on the drawing. So let's say you made use of the 2x plus 10 and DEG was equal to 180, you know, supplementary angles. Let's say you made use of that one. Then you would have had an answer here of 170 minus 2x. So the other option then would have been to say that DEG, DEG is actually equal to EGF. EGF, like we did in the previous one, because it was alternate angles. And then you just fill it in, the 170 minus 2x is equal to x plus 20, and you solve it the same way as what we did there, so you'll get the same answer. Okay. Next question. It says here that O is represented as the center of the circle. Okay. The moment that it's center of the circle, we have to think of equal radii. So that's the first thing that I'm thinking of here. Equal radii. So there's a radius and there's a radius. What else? I don't have an angle in a semicircle, nothing. But let's read the rest of, of what's given. It further says ON is perpendicular, okay? ON is perpendicular to PR. So yeah, we sit with center. The line from center circle is a perpendicular bisector of the chord. You remember the first? Theorem. If you sit with that is the center of the circle, and this is a chord, and that's perpendicular, then we know these two will be equal in size. We also sit with two tangents. RS and PS are tangents, and it's tangents from the same exterior point. At the moment that we sit with two tangents, it might not look like a tangent for you because it's not been extended. But these are tangents from the same exterior point. So that one and that one will be equal. And they've just got, they just joined that line. So it means this angle and that angle will be equal. 
Calculate the size of NOR, okay, NOR. NOR, so it means we must figure out this angle. Okay, so where on earth would we start? We can't just work with, don't be tempted to think that this is angles in the same circle segment because it's not. But we can start off saying that this angle R is equal to that one. So I'm going to start off saying these two are equal. So this one will be 42.83. Because we must try and get to that little angle there. See, because these two lines are equal. So if this is 15, that will also be 15 units. So that's, you know, it's not that we can see the answer yet, but it's something we can, we can write down. So we're going to say that SP is equal to SR, because it's tangents from the same point, tangents from the same point, same exterior point. So therefore, PRS, PRS, this one, will be equal to angle P, and that will be equal to 42,83 degrees. Okay, and you fill it in on the drawing. What else do we have here? Because remember now, we're still trying to get to angle O. Well, we know that this one, this angle, will be equal to 90 degrees because that's a tangent. And whenever you sit with a radius and a tangent, the angle will be 90 degrees. So that's what we can say there. So I'm just going to say that angle O, R, S is 90 degrees. Tan perpendicular to radius. So this is 90 degrees. And if this is 90 degrees, we can figure out O, R, N. And if we have O, R, N, we can work with interior angles of a triangle to figure out that angle O. Right. So I'm going to say here that O, R, N. will be equal to 90 degrees minus 42.83. That gives you 47,17 degrees. And now we can figure out that one. So just fill in this missing angle, 47,17. And therefore, NOR is equal if, well, you can say it's going to be 180 degrees minus 90 minus 47,17, and that gives you 42.83. All right, so always just fill it in on the drawing. Another question based on this. So what I'm first going to do, I'm just quickly going to fill in what we just worked out. 42,83 is what we got there. And this one was 47,17. And this one was 42,83 degrees. All right, for this presentation, we'll just go up until here and then I will send you another one. This question says, O is the center of the circle. We have everything. Calculate the length of the radius. So we must try and figure out the length of the radius. And remember now this is 90 degrees and we sit here with a tangent. So this is 15. 
So what what is shouting out to me here is Pythagoras. They also tell us here that TS is nine units. So from T to S is nine units. And we must somehow try and figure out the radius. So if I can figure out ON, and I can work with Pythagoras, will be sorted. So let's see. I'm going to start off saying that OR is X. I don't know what's the size. I just know it's equal radii, remember? So this is a X, and that one is a X. So I'm going to say let OR be equal to X. So if this is equal to a X, then OT will be equal to S. But my 90 degree is here, and I've got that one is 15. So I want to work with this big triangle with Pythagoras. And they already told us TS is 9, so I can say, therefore, the whole of O going to S would be equal to X plus 9. I'm just going to say again that angle ORS is 90 degrees because of the tan perpendicular to the radius. And then we're going to apply Pythagoras. So I'm going to start off with a short side plus the short side. So it's X squared plus 15 squared will be equal to that x plus 9 squared Pythagoras. So x squared plus 2 to 5. So it just becomes a, well, let's see. It's going to be a trinomial or not. the x squares will cancel out and therefore you can say 18x will be equal to 144 if you subtract so x is equal to 8 units okay so now we have this one is 8 units that whole one And we had to figure out the radius. Okay, that's all we actually had to figure out here was that radius. We didn't have to figure out Rn at all. So therefore, radius is eight units. Okay. Thanks for watching.